What it do YouTube, it's your boy Blackie Stone and I am back with another video. Guys, super excited for this video. <sighs> A little hesitant. However, I started this channel not to hold back, but to give. My main motto is some will, some won't. So what next? <laughs> I'm going to release this information. It's already out there. You may have already seen it. We're going to sublimate using a DTF process. Sublimate to DTF. DTF means direct to film. Direct to film. And we're going to get right into this video, guys. No hesitation, no intro, no breaks. We're getting right into the video. Like I said, guys, I'm excited. I'm gonna try to get through this video without doing too much editing. And um, this is gonna be a raw and uncut video for the most part, guys. Now, getting right into the video, there's some there's some products that we're going to use in order to do this hack. You saw the commercial. You came back for the video. Now you're going to see the open box. What was in that bag? Inside the bag was this DTF adhesive from in goodies. Now this is some premium powder for DTF ink transfer printing. Uh, it says here that it's compatible with hot and cold, hot and cold peels, I would imagine that's what that means. It's for bright colors, scratch resistant, and, tw and it has a 24 month shelf life. There's some other instructions on the back that we need to consider before we get into the process guys guys because you want to use safety first in everything safety first before we produce so it says here keep out of reach of children do not eat the powder of course however if you eat the powder consult a doctor immediately use powder in normal temperatures um keep powder in cool dry place Keep powder in an airtight container. Keep away from direct sunshine. Here's the key, guys. Here's what's very important as far as your personal protection. It says, please wear personal protective equipment, eyeglasses, a mask, and gloves when working with DTF products. The fumes from curing the powder can be hazardous. So we're gonna make sure that we have good ventilation. We got our window up. I don't have any rubber gloves. I do have glasses. And I'm, what we're gonna try to do is not come in direct contact as far as our hands, hand contact with this powder, okay? But we're gonna get right into this. Like I said, this is one product that we that we're going to be that we need for this process. We also need the film because remember it's DTF direct to film. So we need this direct to film. This particular product that we're using is also from In Goodies. I got it off of uh, Amazon. I'll try to leave a link in the description and um, this product guys again it's just it's 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 fantastic the benefits is bright colors and clear prints print and cut size you want no weeding washable there's no cracks and no fade guys um, it's compatible with Epson and all DTF printers we're not using a DTF printer, we're using our Sawgrass, our SG500 sublimation printer. 
that normally once you get a printout you have to use some kind of uh, 60 40 polyester fabric in order to adhere your print on this is going to be a hack guys pay attention um the applications that this stuff is good for um polyester cotton t-shirts hoodies mugs mouse pads phone cases pillows etc we're basically going to be interested in what t-shirts t-shirts maybe uh book bags or something like that but uh we're not going to get too fancy with it we're just going to use t-shirts one thing before we get get going guys this product does not work for dark colors you come to the channel because we've tried and tested certain things and we tried and tested to use this product on dark colors guess what guys it didn't work here's the results here's the results as you can tell the results aren't that good um, I'm pretty sure I used this stuff on the right side um, but it did not work so we also tried it on white color I'll show you the results of that later on in the video today at this particular time we're going to be using a 100% cotton t-shirt from Gildan I believe it's uh, a G420 so it has a nice soft feel or is it a 420 420 is polyester isn't it? uh, it's doesn't give a number here and I do not have my glasses but trust me guys I would do a uh, close-up it is definitely a 100% cotton t-shirt it's a bone color, so it's an off-white um, or beige color. It's not completely white. We're gonna use that. We have our butcher paper. We have a container that we're gonna be using for the uh, for the powder for the DTF uh, adhesive. We already put that in. Uh, we also need guys a piece of paper as you may know the um, SG 500 only holds eight and a half up to eight and a half by 14 the bottom would be eight and a half by 11 the film it comes in a three size which is 11.7 by 16.5. So we're going to have to cut these in half. I believe there's like 15 in a packet, which is pretty cool because instead of only getting 15, we're going to cut it in half and get twice the number. We're going to get 30 prints out of one packet. The instructions are in front of the packet, guys. Pay attention here, guys, Pay, uh, because this is something that I kept getting confused on because this film, this this film, you really can't tell by the touch um, what's the print print side and what's not. So here's a trick what I'm going to do because on the bag it tells you A3 mat and this is the print side I'll, I'll give you some b-roll for that guys this is the print side so when we take it out guys you take out the the direct the film and as soon as you lay it on on your platform it's definitely going to be the print side okay after you opened up your bag and you have your film on your canvas, make sure that you close or seal that bag up.
because you don't want any moisture to build up. It may uh, limit the shelf life of the product. And that goes for the, um, the adhesive as well. Once you open up the bag, it has a sealing. Make sure you seal it completely because you don't want any moisture getting in inside because just think about it, it's glue. Adhesive is glue. So if you have any kind of moisture within that, in the bag, it's gonna to start to what? Clot, right? It's gonna clot up and then it's gonna be unusable. So once you open the bag, make sure you seal it tight, okay? Um, let me bring you in closer so that I can show you what we have on the pallet. Okay guys, like I was saying, we got the film on our pallet. This is the print side. So here's what we're gonna do. We need a piece of paper, preferably an eight and a half piece of paper because this film will not feed through the uh, the printer. So we need something to stiffen up this uh, the paper even more so so that it will go through. okay? So what we're we have some some um, extra paper over here that we're going to use, okay? Another product that we're going to have to use is some scotch tape or some tape of some sort, guys. Okay? Here's what I, here's what it, here's what we're going to do. This is the print side. We're going to Remember eight and a half by eleven. So the tape is gonna have to be within eight and a half by eleven, okay? Not any longer, not any shorter. Well, it can be actually shorter, but we want to try to make it go from one side to the other. Okay. This is the print side. Put your tape down on the print side, right? Making sure that it's nice and flat. Remember, this film is gonna to have to be fed through your printer. And so it has to be flat. Now, what we're gonna do is take this paper line it up on the opposite side remember keeping your print side faced up at all times don't confuse yourself because if you get too far ahead of yourself you're gonna forget which side is the print side um again you can't really feel by the touch what is the the uh, print side and what's not so keep your print side faced up as soon as you take it out the bag we have our heat press heated up guys so i'm starting to sweat here so we're gonna move along um okay so with that piece of paper lined up with the film the white paper with the film what you want to do is just lap that tape right over and tape it right to that paper, okay? Make sure there's no crinkles in it. Make sure it's nice and smooth because what we're trying to do is avoid any paper jams, okay? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to avoid any paper jams. So if it's not smooth, guys, Make sure that you lift that tape back up and just simply smooth it down. Make your adjustments, whatever you have to do. 
and make it smooth, okay? Now, again, this is our print side. That's gonna be face down right inside our tray, right? This is the print side, so it's gonna be face down on the tray. Remember, we can't feed this, we can't load this because it's too wide. So what we're gonna have to do is cut that. Cut that in half. Let's get our scissors, and being that we already have it taped, we have, a, we have uh, some marks on how to cut it, right? Um, let me let me do that again, guys. Cause I don't think I did that right. We don't want any paper jams. We're trying to avoid any paper jams. I'm telling you, this stuff will jam up on you, and uh, it's not gonna feed. <laughs> It's not going to feed, so let me uh, take this off, and we're going to start this all over again, okay? Making sure that our print side stays faced up, okay? Let's get another piece of tape. Let's take that off. Let's hold, okay? Let's get another piece of tape. We're going to use the same paper, though. This time, I'm not going to have a long as long of a piece of paper as a piece of tape so that I can make it easy easier on myself okay okay there we go and Print side always facing you. Print side is always facing us, guys. And with that, all we want to do is wrap that around. This is probably the hardest part, guys. This is probably the hardest part, lining up your paper so that you can get a proper feed as well as no paper jams, right? You wanna try to avoid as many paper jams as possible. Okay, here we go. All right, now what we wanna do being that we have our guideline is cut on that edge, okay? Straight up. And basically, if your scissors are nice and sharp, all you gotta do is slide it up and it will cut. Now, with this piece of paper, with that remaining director film, you wanna put it right back in your bag because again you don't know which side is the print side and not on the bag there is okay so let's open that up put that in seal it up next time we want to print something else we know where we left off at. Okay, let me bring you over to the printer. Okay guys, we are over at the SG500. The Sawgrass SG500. We have our paper. Now, let's close that drawer up. The regular writing paper goes on top and the print side is face down. We got our drawer for, uh, measured out for eight, eight and a half by 11. And what we wanna do is just load it up, okay? 
bring the tray out and with that being said guys what I'm going to do is go over to our computer and print up a file that we found on the web and print it to the SG and send that file to the SG500 okay let's get it let's go I'll turn the camera back on once the printer starts printing okay guys the SG500 is printing it took a minute before it would start because I need to get some more yellow ink <laughs> and your boy has been too cheap he's trying to get the most out of this ink cartridge before he has to buy some more ink so uh, that was the reason there was a delay and it looks like it's still delaying because uh, it paused and it's not finished printing Okay, started back up. Normally, guys, your SD500 is eight and a half by by eleven, eight and a half by fourteen. Um, doesn't really take much for this printer to print. So we got our print. We got our print, guys. What you want to do is not touch the ink, okay? Because it's still wet. Let's get over to the printer. Let's get over to the heat source. And I will show you what we have to do next. Okay, guys, work with me, work with me. What we have is our butcher paper down on our platen. Because remember, the uh, this is adhesive that we're going to put on the film, okay? And you don't want any of that adhesive on your platen. So we're using this butcher paper. And what you do is simply pour it, the adhesive on the film. And being that it's wet, what it's going to do is adhere to it. But what we're going to do Just kind of make it stick okay work with me guys hopefully I don't have I'm not blocking the camera but this is what you do kind of rotate it in the film left to right okay up and down and all of your extra DTF adhesive will fall right into the tray okay what I like to do is do that maybe once or twice tap that excess off reason why you tap guys is because any excess adhesive left on the um, the film your final results gonna look a little grainy so if you're getting grainy results because you left too much adhesive on the film so we're just gonna do is tap that off right okay now we need to let this cure but first we're gonna take off the back of the paper Okay, remember that tape? Gonna take that off, leaving it on the paper, and uh, putting that off to the side. Still trying to get all that ex excess adhesive off the film. You don't get it off get enough off guys it will definitely um, leave a grainy result that's good enough that's good enough use your own judgment guys when it comes to that just look at your product product closely and um, 
judge for yourself. What we're gonna do, guys, is um, we're gonna leave this butcher paper down because again, we don't want that to uh, get on our platen. I'm gonna close our platen up. Guys, let me move you up a little closer. Now we're gonna use our heat source to cure the adhesive onto the sublimation ink. Okay, we have our heat source, our heat press from Heat Press Nation. Temperature is at 314, right? What I'm going to do, guys, being that uh, ch -ch -ch, I don't want it, it, you don't want your heat source, to, your the top platen to come all the way down. So what I'm going to do is use my cell phone and use a timer on it. But I want to cure this for about four minutes, four to five minutes, guys. So I'm going to start that process now. Okay. And you guys don't need to wait five minutes, but here's what I'm doing, guys. I have a an a, a old shirt because this top platen is really, really hot. So what I'm doing is, you know, the top plate, it will wobble back and forth. So to keep an even heat source while it's hovering, because I don't have a hovering um, heat press, I just push the uh, plate down and it, and it flattens out. And it gives a more uh, flat surface as far as the heat source. So that's what's going on here. I'm gonna keep it just like this for, what, five minutes, guys. Um, Cause you want that adhesive to, to dry so that you're not getting a grainy result. Another thing, guys, a question that I had when I first saw this video was, why can't we just print, put the adhesive down, and then put it on a shirt? Well, if you don't cure the adhesive, guys, your final result will again come out grainy. So there's a need to uh, dry the sublimation with your heat source, as well as cure your DTF adhesive for that allotted time. And this is gonna be a while, guys, so I'll be right back, okay? Oh, before we go, um, some some people don't have some of you, for those that do not have a top platen that will wobble like this. You guys are gonna have to take your your film and rotate it. Just simply rotate it, and you can see how it's getting dark there. It's really starting to cure now um you want to just rotate your uh your film so that it dries evenly or, the, or that it cures evenly okay and um you can possibly like um it's four sides so you can swivel it what like every minute and 25 seconds so every, what, 85 seconds, you can rotate the film so that everything cures evenly. We're at three minutes already, guys. And um, we're gonna rotate it again, just for keepsake. Just for the sake of those that don't have this pop. pop uh. What's good is some, some of you guys have that swing away um platen and or your that swing away heat press so <clears throat> you guys can just swing it over and just let it cure and while you're letting it cure you can be working on another project some other options that you could have is um purchasing a dtf dryer that will help 
cure the process a little bit faster. Um, I'm gonna try to do some research and possibly um, leave a link for some uh, fairly, inexp fairly inexpensive uh, heat dryers or DTF heat dryers. Or you, I've seen also in some other videos where some crafters have been using um, a convection oven. The only thing is you can't just put the film on the tray or the rack. You have to definitely use a, a tray because if you just put it on the rack itself, it's gonna leave those lines, just like a burger, like a hamburger. It's gonna leave like a hamburger does for, or a grill does to a hamburger. If you don't use a tray, it will definitely use those lines or give those lines in your DTF. You don't want that. You want a solid, even out, uh, picture right we're almost done guys hope I haven't talked to you too long but we're almost done we're at five minutes what I'm going to do is just leave it in there for another minute we're going to take it off and get our t-shirt ready for pressing be right back okay guys we are back and as you can tell the picture itself is starting to cure. It's starting, the colors are starting to pop out. But those colors right there, guys, <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. Wait until we uh, press this on a shirt. So let's get our shirt and all this stuff out the way. Just in case you guys had a question of whether or not um, I could smell some fumes. I can smell something different. Yeah, I can definitely smell something different. Um, it's not loud, but it's definitely something different that wasn't there before we started this process. So we're gonna put our plat, our t-shirt down, get it ready for, for pressing, All right? Excuse my shoulder, guys. I'm trying to do this with a better camera angle so that you guys can see the full effect. Um, before we press this to take the moisture out, what we want to do is use our lint roller. Because again, this is sublimation, guys. Um, this ink will still get, it's, still, it's, it's gonna burn whatever's on this t-shirt. So just get in the habit of using your lint roller even if you're not using sublimation because uh, getting a habit just becomes a part of nature, right? So we're gonna use that right there. Um, it becomes automatic rather is what I was trying to say. So let's put our heat press down for what? Maybe 10 seconds just to get the moisture out. This is a pre-press, getting all those wrinkles, moisture, okay? Boom, we got that up. Let's get our transfer. Guys, I can't believe we're making DTF transfers. <laughs> we are making DTF transfers. Okay, we're gonna line this up just so, okay? We got three fingers down. Boom, just like that. And we're gonna use our butcher paper. So before we use our butcher paper, we're just gonna slide that in. Look at those colors, excuse my shoulder guys. Look at those colors starting to pop already. Oops, don't wanna do that kid. Don't wanna do that kid. Okay, let's get our butcher paper. I think I want to move the shirt down so okay let's get our butcher paper put that in there and we're pressing this at 
three. Yeah, we're pressing this at 315 for 40 seconds, guys. 315 at 40 seconds. This is going to be a cold peel. Um, I have used this for hot peels, but for keepsake, guys, most of the uh, DTF film that you guys are going to use is going to require a cold film, uh, a cold peel. So let's let's remain consistent in that way, and um, we're going to use a cold peel in this. So that's 40 seconds. Lift that bad boy up. Okay. And it's still hot, guys. So what we're going to do is put you guys back on a better camera angle. And then while we're doing that, the uh, DTF film is going to be, or the shirt is going to be cooling off. So I'll be right back. Okay guys, we are back. We are back. I should probably bring you in closer so that you can see the actual reveal. But before we do that, I wanna show you guys how I cool my products off before I peel it off. Some people have marble, this, that, and the other. The average person isn't gonna have a marble counter. Um, we just have to use space, right? So what I do is take my t-shirt off the platen and I simply just fan it off. <laughs> I simply just fan it off and uh, guys, that normally works for me. Let me see if I can, it's still a little warm to the touch. So what we're gonna do is fan it, keep on fanning it off, keep on fanning it off. And I'm gonna bring you in. I'm gonna bring you guys in. I should have measured the shirt a little bit better because I put it on kind of crooked, guys. But it's okay. We still gonna wear this anyway, right? We still gonna wear it because uh, it's not. We're not selling it. We're gonna gift ourselves. So let me stop the video. Bring the camera over so that you guys can see the big reveal. Okay, guys, we're back. You guys ready for this? Are you ready for this? <laughs> Are you ready for the big reveal? Here we go, guys. You can see those colors right now. Hopefully, the film, um, the adhesive sticks to everything, and everything was worked out the way we planned it. Drum rolls, please. Let's go. Let's see what we got. Are you guys getting this? Are you guys getting this? Oh, I had this little area right here. Didn't dry. So again, guys, when you when you're drying off your film, Make sure you rotate the film so that everything adheres to your t-shirt. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think? This is amazing, right? I think it is. I think it is. Now let me reposition the camera and um, we'll be right back. Is this an option that you might want to use in the future? Especially until you get that white toner printer, that DT, that DTG printer, that DTF printer. Remember the price tag on those things. Um, guys, you might be wondering how much ink came, actually did come off the film. Here it is right here. Can you see that? Just about, I mean, you can see a little bit, but just about all of that uh, sublimation ink came right up off the film. And again, we wanna make sure that we rotate the film so that uh, 
everything dries perfectly. I'm impressed with this process, guys. I'm, I'm actually impressed with this hack. I can see myself using this because again, not everybody wants to use 100% polyester. Some people are allergic to it. You know, some people just don't like the feel of it. Um, some, most people that I know, most of my customers would prefer 100% cotton t-shirts or a heather t-shirt you know um there's so many different things that you guys can do with this i know what i'm going to do but i still want you guys opinion on what how do you think this could fit for you in your process maybe in, uh, in your t-shirt making business guys comment below give me a thumbs up like the video um share the video Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, guys, if you haven't already. If you found value within the video, make sure you subscribe. Make sure that your post notifications are set to all. That way, next time we drop another bomb video like this one, you guys will be notified and you can learn more. Okay, this is a channel where we learn and grow. I make the mistakes so that you don't have to. Um, for the most part, guys, we are leaning toward craftable things. Uh, if that is something that you're interested in, this is the channel for you. We try to drop a video on a weekly basis, most likely on Thursday. But if we don't, guys, um, we are definitely going to drop videos once a week. So make sure your post notifications are set to all. That way you'll be notified and you'll be right back with us, gang. With that being said, guys, I'm going to say like I always say, peace, love, and respect, gang.